11 Extremely Weird Things Which Were Normal in Ancient Rome Ancient Rome was a fascinating civilization, but it had its fair share of quirks and eccentricities that may seem unusual. Today, let's embark on a journey that's bound to leave you scratching your head. Yes, we are talking about the 11 extremely weird things that were normal in ancient Rome. Roman civilization has been known for its grandeur, power, and innovation. But what if I told you that alongside those glorious marble columns and majestic emperors, there existed a world of utter quirkiness? From the bizarre tales of using urine as a detergent for clothes to social gatherings at the public toilets, we are about to unveil the ancient Roman weirdest secrets. So stay tuned till the end as we spill the beans on this and much more. 1. Animal Dung for Healing Let's kick things off with a topic that's sure to leave you both intrigued and slightly bewildered. Warning, hold on to your stomachs. This one's a doozy. Can you believe that some Romans thought that animal dung had healing powers? It's true. We're talking about dung, the stuff we usually avoid at all costs. But back then, they believed it could cure what ailed them. From applying dung poultices to some, let's say unusual ways of using it in medical treatments, the Romans had a knack for turning the ickiest of substances into supposed remedies. 2. Using urine as a detergent This one will blow your mind. The ancient Roman laundry detergent of choice. Urine. Yes, you heard it right. The Romans had a laundry secret that might make your washing machine seem much less quirky. They used urine as a cleaning agent. But before you start thinking about canceling your detergent subscription, let's explore just how and why they did it. Roman hygiene practices might surprise you. While we might turn up our noses at the thought of using pee for cleaning, the Romans saw it as a practical solution. Ammonia is a natural alkaline substance that can help break down and dissolve organic matter, such as stains and dirt. In urine, ammonia is produced as a waste product when the body metabolizes proteins. The process involves soaking the soiled or stained clothing in a mixture of water and urine. The ammonia in the urine would help break down the dirt and stains making it easier to rinse them away. 3. Public toilets were social gathering spots. Hold on to your sandals because we're about to enter a space where ancient Romans did a whole lot more than just their business. The public toilets. You see, for the Romans, public toilets weren't just functional necessities. They were communal gathering spots. Can you imagine striking up a conversation with your neighbor while answering nature's call? Well, in ancient Rome, that was pretty standard. We've got some juicy anecdotes about the kinds of conversations that happened in these unique public spaces. They served as social hubs where Romans could catch up on the latest gossip or engage in discussions. Politicians sometimes used public toilets as platforms for election campaigns. They would post campaign materials or engage with potential voters in these busy public spaces. That's not all. Commerce boomed near these spots. Merchants and entrepreneurs recognized the visibility of these locations and use them for marketing purposes. Isn't it interesting? Four, weirdest toilet hygiene. Time to get a little cheeky as we dive headfirst into the world of ancient Roman toilet hygiene. Brace yourselves, it's about to get weird. Roman toilets lacked privacy. Imagine showing off your butt rounds to your counterparts. One of the most distinctive features was using a sponge stick, often called a xylospongium or tersorium. This tool had multiple uses in Roman toilet hygiene, and while it might appear unusual to us, it was a practical solution in the context of their time. After using the toilet, individuals would moisten the sponge in a communal water channel or basin, and then use it for cleaning. That's not all. Here is the twist. The sponge sticks were communal, meaning that multiple people used the same sponge stick throughout the day. After use, the sponge was rinsed in the flowing water to prepare it for the next user. Yak! The presence of waste, including human and animal waste, could attract rodents and pests. The lack of individual separation heightened the risk of exposure to pests. 5. Awkward Roman Cuisine Now time for a culinary adventure that'll make your taste buds do a double take. The world of bizarre Roman cuisine. Ever heard of pig womb, stuffed dormice, or mashed brains? If not, get ready for some gastronomic surprises. These dishes featured ingredients that were not commonly used in everyday Roman cuisine, making them exotic and intriguing. Romans were known for their culinary curiosity and willingness to experiment with various ingredients. They combined unusual ingredients and flavors to create novel and distinctive flavors, 
catering to the tastes of the elite and adventurous eaters. Serving such dishes at feasts and gatherings could be a way for hosts to display their wealth and sophistication. The documentation of these dishes in ancient Roman texts and cookbooks provides us with a glimpse into the culinary practices of the time. They offer a window into the gastronomic world of ancient Rome. 6. Selling Children as Slaves You might be thinking, how could parents ever sell their children into slavery? Don't worry, it wasn't a permanent sale. The practice of families selling their children as a means of economic survival or to pay off debts was not uncommon in various historical societies, including ancient Rome. This practice was known as pater familias, where the head of the household, usually the father, had significant authority over the family, including the power to sell family members into slavery for a specified period. Roman law imposed certain limitations on the pater familias regarding selling children into slavery. One of these limitations was the rule that a parent could not sell a child into slavery more than three times during their lifetime. The practice of selling children into slavery in ancient Rome, including the rule of selling more than three times, illustrates the complex interplay between legal, economic, and ethical considerations in the context of family life. 7. Gladiator Blood as Medicine Prepare to enter a world where the line between medicine and superstition gets as blurry as a gladiator's vision after a tough fight, the fascinating belief in gladiator blood as medicine. Imagine believing that the sweat and blood of gladiators had magical curative powers. Well, in ancient Rome, that was a thing. Romans were obsessed with the belief in gladiator blood's extraordinary medicinal properties. From gladiator blood baths to physicians prescribing them to treat various ailments, the Romans had a unique relationship with these heroic fighters. Gladiator blood was sometimes recommended as a treatment for epilepsy, a neurological disorder characterized by recurrent seizures. Blur, blur. How can someone think of drinking the blood of other humans like vampires? However, Romans believed that the strength and vitality of the gladiator could be transferred to the person with epilepsy through the consumption of their blood. Not only that, but some Romans believed that ingesting gladiator blood could cure infertility or boost fertility. This belief likely stemmed from the idea that the vitality of the gladiator would be transferred to the person seeking to improve their reproductive health. On the contrary, the consumption of blood, especially from a source as unsanitary as a gladiator's, posed significant health risks and would not have had the desired curative effects attributed to it. 8. Phalluses as Good Luck Charms Hold on to your talismans because we're about to dive into a subject that's all about protection, good fortune, and, well, a bit of cheekiness, the ancient Roman obsession with man genitalia. Male reproductive organs were not just part of anatomy for the Romans, they were symbols of immense significance. But here's where it gets fascinating. Romans commonly hung phallus-shaped amulets known as fascinum or phallus charms above their doorways. These amulets were made from materials like metal, wood, bone, or stone. Placing a phallus amulet above the entrance was believed to protect the household from malevolent spirits and bring good fortune. Romans also wore phallus-shaped jewelry, such as pendants, necklaces, and rings, as protective amulets. These pieces were often crafted from various materials, including gold, silver, and precious gemstones. Wearing phallus jewelry was thought to provide personal protection against negative influences and to bring luck and fertility. Phallic symbols were commonly incorporated into Roman art and architecture. They could be found in frescoes, mosaics, and sculptures, as well as in the design of furniture and household items. The use of phallic imagery in art was not solely for protective purposes, but also had connections to fertility and vitality. Phallic imagery was woven into everyday life, from doorways and jewelry to art and festivals, reflecting the complex cultural and superstitious beliefs of the time. 9. Stripping Naked in Public Bathhouses Get ready to strip away the social norms and dive into a world where everyone was equal, the Roman bathhouse. In these Roman bathhouses, your social status didn't matter. Whether you were a humble plebeian or a powerful senator, everyone stripped down to their birthday suits and enjoyed the same facilities. But what went on inside these bathhouses besides getting squeaky clean? Socializing and relaxation took place amidst the steam and splashes. From gossip sessions to games, 
It was all about unwinding and connecting. And here's the kicker. The bathhouse experience stood in stark contrast to the hierarchical norms of Roman society outside its steamy embrace. 10. Women and funeral etiquette. Time to get into a world where tears weren't welcomed, the intriguing Roman funeral etiquette, and the surprising ban on women shedding tears. Imagine a world where women were expected not to cry at funerals. It's quite the opposite of what we'd expect, right? Roman funerary rituals and customs also influenced the expression of grief. Funerals in ancient Rome were often public events, and they followed specific protocols. Family members were expected to participate in these rituals with a sense of decorum and dignity. These cultural norms and expectations regarding the expression of grief were specific to ancient Roman society and differed from modern customs and beliefs. 11. Sex was not a taboo back then. Finally, let's dive into a topic that delves into the deepest layers of Roman society, the complex and intriguing role of sex as a power dynamic. In ancient Rome, sex wasn't just about love and desire. It was intertwined with power, politics, and social status. Roman society had distinct gender roles and expectations. Men were often encouraged to engage in sexual conquests and affairs as a sign of masculinity, while women were expected to be chaste and modest. Sex was sometimes used as a tool for political manipulation and influence. Extramarital affairs and alliances through marriage were prevalent in Roman politics. Prominent individuals, including emperors, often had multiple marriages or sexual liaisons for political purposes, such as securing alliances with rival factions or regions. Before we say our goodbyes, remember that history is a vast treasure trove of stories waiting to be explored. Share your thoughts on these weird aspects of ancient Rome. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and ring the notification bell so you never miss a new adventure with History Duck.